Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and today, of course, we are talking about the Pulp Alley Adventure Game. Specifically today, let's talk about the China Station book, this campaign. So this is a uh, campaign, a book for Pulp Alley. Uh, you know, the, the idea of China Station really comes from Bob Murch, who's the fellow up there in Canada that does the Pulp Figures range of miniatures. Pulp Figures was a huge inspiration for Pulp Alley, and uh, this is one of his ideas that was kind of turned into a, a Pulp Alley campaign book here. So really, really cool. Throughout um, the book, we use a lot or we show a lot of the pulp figures from his China Station range. But honestly, you could use whatever miniatures you want to use. You could even place it in a different setting, a different time period, and so on. It's very easy to adapt this sort of thing to a lot of different uh, settings. So, uh, it is a 12 scenario campaign. It is linear in that you are expected to start with scenario number one and finish with scenario number 12. Now, there's some of the things that can be rearranged in there, but for the most part, that's the way you progress through the campaign. It is for one to four players, so you can certainly play it solo, you can play it co-op, or you can play it versus other sides as well, other players. Really, really uh, great little campaign book. The, uh, uh, let's see, there's a nice little uh, forward here by Mr. Merch where he talks about uh, the idea of China Station, and that's, uh, you know, we have a, a big thanks to him for all of that. And then, of course, uh, you know, here's, here's the quick little index and credits and so on. And then we pretty much get into the campaign rules. So the MacGuffin for China Station, as far as our campaign is concerned, is something, a mysterious something or someone called Code 327. At the start of the campaign, the characters don't even really know what Code 327 is. A mysterious uh, radio transmission is intercepted and they find out that uh, the mysterious code 327 has gone missing or lost somewhere around China Station, which is a port in, uh, in our setting. It's a, it's a port in, uh, you know, in China, uh, somewhere along the China coast or very close there. Um, it's kind of based, uh, inspired, I guess, by an old serial that I enjoy called Secret Agent X-9. Not the 1930s version, but the 1945 version with Lloyd Bridges uh, was a big influence on this. So if you go back and you watch Secret Agent X-9, the 1945 version, you're going to see a lot of shades of that as you go through this, uh, this book. So in, in, in Secret Agent X, X9, there is this uh, kind of independent island called Shadow Island, and it is heavily influenced by uh, the Japanese, but also uh, the Americans and the Australians are trying to go in there and find out what's going on. Uh, and that's sort of the idea here as well. China Station is a somewhat independent port, but it is getting uh, more and more pressure from the Japanese who are nearby. But then also some other foreign agents are coming in there to either cause problems or find the mysterious Code 327. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it starts off basically with the characters getting washed ashore where their boat or their submarine or whatever was attacked off the shore of, the, of, of China Station. And they make it ashore and then, you know, it goes from there. At some points they have to defend China Station. They have to protect it. At some points they uh, take a boat and go upriver. At some points they find a secret tomb. 
so on and on, it culminates in the final scenario, scenario number 12, The Trade War. So a lot of fun, really cool book. I think you guys would, will enjoy this one. Throughout it, you're going to see that uh, there's the layout for River Pirates. Uh, we have some beautiful artwork in there. There are cards in here. So you don't have to, oh, I'm not showing you the right thing there. Here it is. Um, there's, the, there's the cards. That's what the cards look like. There's the, uh, there's the other stuff I was talking about. So each scenario, or I think all the scenarios have a, a certain amount of cards. Uh, and uh, there's the Tomb of Dagon. So that's pretty fun. But what got me thinking about this is that we're actually going to be playing this scenario um, on Sunday. So this is the Tomb of Dagon. So this is going to be the scenario that we play on Sunday. So I wanted to let you guys know that uh, although these are part of a campaign, you can easily go in there and pull this scenario out or that scenario and play it as a one-off scenario as well. You can have a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun. It's a it's a really cool campaign. Uh, again, we'll get back into the book a little bit here. Of course, it gives you a map there of the dungeon. Uh, and then you get back to, here's a horror scenario um, called The Fog. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a scary one. And then we get into the Moon Festival. That's a lot of fun. This is, there's a little bit of comedy in this one where the, uh, the players are forced, uh, the characters are forced to kind of compete in a contest uh, called the Moon Festival, and then it culminates in scenario number 12, um, the Trade War. So, check it out. It's available over on the Pulp Alley store. Uh, Chris Abbey over there at Sally Forth probably has some copies of this too if you're in the UK or the EU. So, check out Pulp Alley. Be sure and get over to Bob Murch's Pulp figures. He has an absolutely amazing range of figures. You can always use whatever miniatures you have. You don't have to use, you know, that's not the way Pulp Alley works. We're, we want you to use, if you got figures laying around that you're not using, playing Pulp Alley is a good way to get them on the table and actually get to play with them. So have fun. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>